I have been selling this book, Zanaz Lee and Wan Chun Hong's Guide to Indie Filmmaking, which is published by MPH. For a while now, it's a really good book. If you want to be a filmmaker, whether it's for YouTube, social media, TV, film, cinema, whatever, this is the book to get. I'm going to make it more accessible and more affordable to all of you because I believe that everybody needs to become a filmmaker. The more filmmakers we have in the world, I think this world will be a better place to live in. Now it's available as an electronic book download on my website, I'm gonna link it here. It's really cheap, it's really affordable, it's only five ringgit if you wanna get the ebook version, okay? Five ringgit! It doesn't really cost much, right? It's just a little bit of something for me. I mean, it did take a lot of work to write. Each chapter of this book talks about one part of the filmmaking process. And for each chapter as well, I interview a local filmmaker. It's only five ringgit! It's only five ringgit! You're watching and listening to the Fat Billion Film Club and I'm assuming I'm Zan Asli. And I'm Shia Himsawan. As usual, every week we listen, uh, we watch. We listen to. We watch a local film and we review it. Mm. This time around, we're reviewing a film made by a Malaysian director. Uh, based in Taiwan. Yeah, and... Uh, it's called... Hello Tape. Hello Tape. Or the Mat Sali called a tapper. <laughs> Okay, you, um, uh, so we watch. Ah, we watch. Hello, Tape. We watch Hello, Tape. Yes. Or, or the Matsalis like to call Tapir. Mm. Tapir. It's a Tapir. Okay, but Ta it's not a Matsali show. Tapir. It's a Taiwanese it's show. It's a Ni Hao Yao Chi Tapian show. Ah, by a Malaysian director. Malaysian director. So who that's why we are reviewing stays in, Taiwan. in Taiwan. But never mind, Ken, still Ken. If we can review, make sure you we can review. No, he's a Malaysian director. It's fine Vinci. because yeah, because I would I would review a Chai Min Liang show, you know. Nah. Um, and Chai Min Liang also went to Taiwan. Yeah. So this flow also went to Taiwan. Yeah. You know. Okay. So why would, why would he go to Taiwan? Why not go to China? It's a big conflict, you know. Some people think China better than Taiwan. Taiwan better than China. And then those who like China, they suddenly they don't like the Mandarin that is being spoken in Taiwan. Okay, but we're not you know? here to discuss yeah. that. We are here to discuss Hello Tape. Yeah, but when you watch a film. All kinds of social issues will come up mm. if you are going to critique and analyze the film. Okay. Yeah, because uh, in that movie, I'm I'm very happy to say that there was a Malay song that the, all the, the the Taiwanese fishermen were singing. Mm. I've never heard of that song before. Mm. Yeah. But yeah. So okay, let's see. Hello, Tape. What's it about? Okay. So hello, Tape is about a little boy who has recently lost his father, or his father is lost. At sea. sea, because they live in a fishing village, and the, the father is like a fisherman, like with those, a boat. The, those real fishermen, they go deep sea fishing one ah. with the big boats, you know. Yeah, ah. the, the cool fishermen, no, <laughs> not the ones that go to a fishing pond, pay and 20 punching. ringgit, and then whatever you catch can bring home cook. Man, uh, uh, this one he actually goes into open water in a boat, sure. and epic band, yeah, like so, the macho fisherman, ah. like the one that George Clooney and, and Mark Wahlberg act mm. in, uh, in, in Perfect Storm. So, okay, his father is lost yeah. at sea, and he's, I guess, trying to deal with it. Uh, so at the same and time, you also see how the he's adults. He's a little kid, right? He's a little kid. He's yeah. like nine. Yeah. And you also see how the adults are sort of dealing with it. So the father uh, has been telling him the story about a creature, a black and white creature with an elephant's nose, that uh, goes around at night. Bo body of and a pig. Eats, uh, and eats people's nightmares. Yeah. No, no. I like so, the description of the tape. It's yeah. so mystical. Yeah. Uh, what? What? A uh, nose of an elephant, body, body of, of a pig, pig, ears of a rhinoceros. Mm. It's quite cool. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, he wants to go into the forest. The father has promised him that they can go deep into the forest to find this creature. Uh, but obviously the father is now missing, so he wants to go find his creature himself. So he tries to get like help from his friends la, and stuff. But at the same time in the story also, you see the progression of the realities, la, how the adults are dealing with it. Um, Basically they mother, declare his father dead. His la. mother who is uh, separated from the... The father comes back. has come back and she's helping to like decide what to do, like sell the boat, don't sell the boat. And then they live with their grandmother. He, he used to live with his grandmother and his father. So now his grandmother is also like 
packing up the clothes lah, what lah. But nobody is telling him. That hey, the father is dead. Your father died already, you know. Uh. They're just doing all these things without. But the thing is, telling even him. even the grandmother is in denial that the son is ah, dead. Ah, so know? it's it's complex, uh, which I guess some um, loss generally is. So that's what the film is about. Yeah. Um, what do we think of the film? What did you think about the film? You can go first. Why? Because I always go first. And do then you, you just dismiss my so, opinion. So I go first and then you dismiss yeah. my, my You can what? take turns dismissing uh, each other. That's it's what healthy okay, yeah. relationships are about. It, it's okay. Um, it's a very nice story. Very nice premise. Supposedly heartwarming. And there were some heartwarming parts. Uh, there were some heartwarming parts. There were some surrealist parts. Uh, there were some. Uh, I think the closest you want to you want you want to make a comparison would be a film by Liu Sing Tat lah. But <laughs> but but um, this one is a little bit more simplistic. Liu Sing Tat and more uh, more simplistic, more commercial, more mainstream lah. The the storyline and all that because when it comes to the heartwarming parts of this little kid trying to understand that his father's mi- missing, uh, how uh, the the ex-wife comes back and the, the ex-mother-in-law at first doesn't really like her but then saw that she's doing so much and then they kind of like at the end they reconcile their relationship you know and they, they actually actually they, they, they eventually become happy at the end right uh, to me it felt very Hollywood lah, right it's a nice story uh, done really well shot really well nice acting um, I think the, the what's the name of the director? Kesvin Kes Kesvin. Ah, the Malaysian director, right? Uh, I think he wrote a nice story. He directed it well. Uh, but a little bit too mainstream for a premise like that. I would have wanted it to be maybe a little bit more... Um, see, I'm not good with words. Uh, I want to say a little bit more quirky. But it didn't come out quirky enough. Because the premise makes it sound like it's a really, really fun, heartwarming and quirky story. A little bit quirky, but not enough. It was like he didn't know how to make it quirky enough, right? Mm. That's the only... Now, I'm, I'm actually... It's quite high standards lah. I'm, I'm giving it very high standards lah, right? It's actually a very enjoyable movie. I really enjoyed watching it. But if you wanna... If you wanna, like... Since it's such like high standards, right? Uh, these are the things that I would say about the film lah, right? Uh, yeah. Could be... Should have been a little bit more quirky lah. Yeah. And I like the setting. The town in Taiwan and all that. Um, you don't look at... You don't see it as Taipei. You don't see like the world's third blood tallest building or whatever, you know. Uh, you don't see his a... mother lives in Taipei though. Yeah, but you don't see and Taipei. He's gonna go back to Taipei. Yeah. So it's in set in like a different, a different place. Yeah, but, but you don't see Taipei. Mm. You don't see a, you don't see a parliament where people throw chairs at each other. <laughs> you know, you don't uh, see those night markets that you always see when you see cutaways of of Taipei. You know. Um, yeah. yeah. Okay, so I don't think it was intended to be quirky. Um, from the get, I think the story was meant to be feeling uh, all about the fulfillings. But it's so, an animal that eats people's yeah, yeah, nightmares. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? So I think yeah. the, the point of the animal was really just to um, illustrate how a child processes yeah, I, I understand loss. that. Yeah, yeah, I understand okay. that. Yeah. So I didn't feel like it really needed to be quirky. So in saying that, I thought simplistically that the film was uh, great. Um, mm. It was actually quite heartwarming, and um, it it was it very is, yeah, it, it was is. just nice to see a film that because usually if you see it from a child's perspective, you only see the child's perspective, or if you see the film from an adult's perspective, you only see it from the adult's perspective. But this one kind of blended both, and I kind of appreciated that because you could see the grief on all sides um, from the mother. I don't really know. It's a bit complex for me when it comes to the character of the mother, not the grandmother. Like the grandmother, we get it. She lost her son, but for the mother, the the grief seemed a little bit complex because we don't really know. We know that she went to to Taipei, and we know that she's got someone else now in Taipei. Gonna get married. Ah, uh, but it's not really clear why they separated, how they left things. Does she hate this guy? Is does she actually like? You know, did they separate when she went to Taipei? There's very little backstory to give you context of what her relationship with this lost man was. We know that she's back now because of her child and she's really doing all this because of the child and also because of, I guess, her former mother-in-law. So it shows that she's a decent person, but 
we don't really know in retrospect how she feels about the lost man you know so um, what we do know is that she's not really helping the kid process his grief or much of anything because she doesn't really communicate with him other nobody than helps the kid surface things process and anything. thus yeah the kid is basically left alone with his friends who in their own way are helping him lah because mm. he says like I want to go into the into the the jungle and the forest and I want ha. to find a tapi and his friends like okay we'll come yeah. with you and then first day they're unsuccessful then they said okay maybe we, we need paint to ourselves. Uh, paint ourselves because so, they like shiny objects ha. so they tried to help him get shiny objects and it that's was where that's where I feel that it wanted to be quirky but failed lah mm, maybe ah, la. you know yeah. all that, that children part in the in the jungle the blowing the bubbles mm. and you, you know yeah I thought that the children part was really um, it's actually quite sad because it really shows the desperation of this kid trying to find uh, the tape in order to get answers about where his father has gone and at the same time there's so many things happening that are beyond his control you know his father's boat is being sold his father's stuff is being packed up nobody's explaining anything to him and there's nothing he can do about it so this finding the tape was really just the one thing he could do to maybe find his father again whom he was clearly very close to so it was sad lah it was just really really mm. really really sad for me the entire show uh, for me felt like it was just meant to be sad but I like the fact that it wasn't done in a super like emoting uh, drab uh, way and it really depicted for me what a child's sadness looks like it's a little bit confusing it's a little bit mystical it's unfamiliar lah unfamiliar for children to be able to process such a huge emotion I mean forget children sometimes adults also have you know trouble processing grief and sudden loss what more like a nine-year-old child who is expecting his father to come back so uh, yeah I thought it was it was really well done um, I, it was a little bit long at parts. I didn't think it needed to be <laughs> that long. Uh, but other than that, it was it was good lah. I thought the acting was really good on all fronts. Um, the kid was especially the two friends not so good. good. His the two, two friends, friends were lousy. Were kind of yeah. two dimensional in that they only served the purpose, which is which was to help him do whatever they wanted. Other than that, they didn't really have there's no real real purpose to them lah. But yeah, it was it's a good film. Yeah, it's um. I would say, if this film was made in America, it would be the the typical film that would be nominated for an Academy Award. Mm. Uh, but would never see the light of day at like Berlin or Venice or <laughs> Cannes or whatever. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, uh, I but I think that was also the intention. He wanted to make a mainstream film, mm. uh, so that it can be distributed everywhere. Uh, Perhaps. Yeah. But like I said, the children part lah, that one was, I, I saw that he was trying to make it quirky, make it like, like, like Roddy Doyle's, uh, Roddy Doyle, ha ha ha, you know, the, the book where he wrote, uh, he, he wrote a novel from the perspective of a five-year-old. Mm. It's very quirky, very, very quirky. So I thought that he was trying, this, Kathleen. Kathleen. I thought he was trying to do that also lah. But maybe, maybe like what you said, he was trying to show all the different perspectives from the adults, the grandmother to the ex-wife and all that, that... It lost its quirky. Ah, a so bit. Uh, lost focus a bit, lah. Mm. You know, um, you know. Okay. But actually, everybody liked the kid. Everybody cared for the kid, including the people at the docks who was dismantling the father's boat. Yeah. Because they were dismantling it, and then he came and he got really angry at them. Why are you dismantling my father's boat? And the uncle was they like, stopped. "Okay, let's stop. Let's stop. Let's just stop doing it today. Mm. Let him go into the boat. You know." And then the kid mm. just went into the boat and, you know, mm. emo lah in the boat. Uh, so, would you tell people to watch the film? It's still showing in the cinema. Ah, go la watch. Ah, yes. Yeah. Go watch the film. Go watch, but don't expect uh, Mandarin that's that's pronounced like because it's not China Mandarin, it's Taiwanese Mandarin. Hmm. Uh, the, and there's the, a Malay song. The real democratic. The real democratic Mandarin. Wow! 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 <laughs> wow! Wow! wow. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So, yeah. like this video. Don't like this video. Follow us on all our social media platforms. No, I'm actually oh, interested. No, no I, I just came to my mind. Okay. I'm, I'm kind of interested to know if Malaysia is going to claim this guy as being Malaysian. Because recently, uh, if you've followed the news, there's that uh, Times Pulitzer photographer Price who's photographer. a Malaysian, Marcus Lam or whatever. Yeah. Right? 
ยำยำเจ๊ง um he won a Pulitzer Prize pretty claiming his religion he is religion lah right but if you hear his interviews all he speaks like an American mm. you know um then there's Ronnie Chang who's gotten a special on Netflix his second special on Netflix yeah we should yeah. review that too uh, are we claiming his religion he's he claims his religion uh, get out there we can review yeah, that as well he's not like 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 this, uh, what Kashvin? Mm. Is he claiming to be Malaysian? Yeah, he claims to be Malaysian who's moved to Taiwan. Ah, so he okay made la. this film actually also because um, he is processing his father's. Uh, yeah, that's true. His father yeah. died, but of course he was already an adult when the father died, lah. Uh, yeah. Was he? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that, that was what he, he okay. said in an interview. So anyway, yeah, lah. Yeah. So so like like Ronnie Chang, for example, did not lose his accent. He doesn't speak like an American, although he's been there longer. Uh, well, I don't know how long Marcus Yam was there. Not a criticism of Marcus Yam lah, because there are many Malaysians who've never even been to America who live in Malaysia but still speak like Americans. Like our children. Yeah, uh, yeah, and a lot of people on radio, uh, all the radio DJs out there who seems to be able to speak in American and British accents. Uh, yeah, but depends then, on which which uh, which radio depends station, which radio station. Which station you're on. Right. If, okay. If, anyway, if but now you're the bank radio station. If, if you're on a radio oh station God. that plays like. The top of the pops hits music. Suddenly you go American accent, but if you're in a radio station which talks about intellectual newsy stuff, then you're like, oh, I have a cup of tea. Ah, so it depends, lah, right? Uh, then you've got the, the 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 RTM radio where they don't know. Uh, my accent is a mix of a uh, 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 Australian got got British also got American also got. Macam macam mana? Ah, so I want to hear. I want to hear this Kevin. I want to hear him speak. Yeah, like Chai Min Liang, he only speaks in Mandarin, no. Doesn't speak Malay, mm. or even in English. Mm. Oh, I've, I've never heard him speak lah. Mm. So it's interesting. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Okay. The diaspora. So you now. Know, Exodus. So <coughs> yeah, I would say watch the film. Okay. Go watch the film. Selamat Hari Raya. Let's not eating. Selamat Hari Raya because it is Hari Raya. Mm. We haven't done the Raya videos yet. We will though. Stay tuned. Uh, yeah. So yeah. So like this video. Don't like this video. Subscribe to us. Follow us on all our social media platforms. Uh, at Fabidin, go to Fabidin.com to get everything. Uh, comment, right? Comment in Mandarin, and I want to see your Mandarin. If I read it in China Mandarin or Taiwanese Mandarin. Yeah, because you would know the difference. Yeah, when, sure. when you read it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So you've been watching and listening to the Fabidin Film Club. Uh, I'm assuming I'm Zan Azli. And I'm Shelly Ibu Salan. Taipan. No, I was gonna say. <laughs> For sure, na. For sure, na. For sure, na. For sure, na.